Good morning everybody, boys and girls, and um, a very happy new year to you all from Mildenhall and Volmer. And today I have a general knowledge, it's what's called today, because today is literally a bit about everything. Um, this video promises to take quite a while, um, so my apologies if it does, but hopefully um, you'll understand we've got quite a lot to get through today in terms of what we're going to be talking about. Um, so today uh, we're going to start with, we've got a bit, of, a bit on wagons, we've got some new additions, we've got um, a chat about 66s, um, we've also got um, a layout update for you as well, and a few woes as well, and um, we'll talk about that as we get to it. So, one of the first things I'd like to talk to you about is we're going to talk about wagons first of all. Let's switch some lights on actually. Hopefully that will clear things up a bit. So, this is my BP wagon. And um, this is a Batman BP wagon. And I did say some time ago I was going to be doing repainting some of my miscellaneous TTAs, um, which I have now done. I've repainted five of these. Um, they were various brands. Some were text. There was a Texco one, um, and a few others that I did. There's five of them in total, and basically I've now given them a nice repaint. So, from top to bottom, I've had a complete repaint. So that's what I've repainted, and that is basically the BP one. So they look pretty much identical. Um, so I've now done all of those and I've since bought all the transfers for these. I'm waiting on the transfers. I'm now waiting on quite a lot to arrive now. There's quite a few things that I'm waiting on. So I'm waiting on some transfers for these. Um, basically the TTA signage that you've got there and that and the has chem um, signage that you've got going on there, these bits here, that's it. I need to order the Railtech BP logos for those as well. Uh, so I'm waiting for all of those bits to turn up, but essentially the wagon is complete and it's looking fabulous. And I've now got a lovely rake of seven um, BP tankers inadvertently. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk to you about um, was um, a little, another, another wagon project was I wanted to talk to you about um, John. Um, this is John Barnes. Some time ago had bought me, well, I say some time ago, it wasn't even all that long ago. Um, it was only about probably a month ago or so, had bought me these j &A wagons. And I've since put loads in them and I've since resprayed them and given them a light weathering. Um, so there you go. So I'm just gonna. So I just wanted to show you that's the wagon load, and that's on done on foam board. Um, this idea came from Alan, so thank you from Alan, and from which I should say he has caused the delay of this video this morning by ringing me, being his usual mad self. <laughs> it's always great to chat to Alan though. Um, but yeah, thanks Alan for that. He gave me the tip on that using the foam board. So let me just show you the weathering on this wagon on a bit more close up. It's not a huge amount. It's just some subtle weathering. It's just to tone it down so it doesn't look so yellow. And um, so I've now got all of that, that rake, which is I think six. I've now all my six rake of J and A's are all done. Um, my apologies if I've actually put this on the last video because I can't remember what I've actually done on the last video um, in terms of a last layout update because obviously I did do a video not so long ago. Um, I've also got some new additions in terms of vehicles. Um, I've ordered some more newer period vehicles for the layout. Um, I did have one or two. Um, I've since added to that. Um, I have a selection here of vehicles, just for now. 
I've got a selection of three um, taxis. Um, these two are new from Oxford Diecast. These are like the um, LEVC uh, newer type taxi. So I bought two of those and it's really lovely, nice. I really like those. And also um, we've got this little, the, the bubble taxi, as I call it. Um, I'd like to try and get a black one, but I haven't been able to get hold of the black ones. Um, but yeah, these are, so I've got that one as well. So I've now got a nice little selection of cabs. And this is to replace my FX4s, which I have, which is more um, to do with, if I do running sessions to do with BR Blue, sectorization and things like that. Um, I've also got um, a couple of minis. So here's the first one. Um, some of you will know recently that I've got a new car and um, it's a mini. So therefore I had to have a mini on the layout. And it's such a cute little car. Um, I've had trouble finding these, um, but when I placed a Hatton's order, um, whilst I was buying what I was going to buy, I added these two minis to the list because um, I couldn't get them anywhere else. So let me show you the other one. They're both really cute. So they're really nice. And then, um, I've got a couple of transporters, VW transporters. Um, this is a T4. Um, and this one was actually the wrong one that I bought, but that's fine. I, I don't mind because I still like it in any case. And the reason why it's the wrong one that I bought is, I'll show you in a minute, is that this is a VW V4, T4. And this is a VW T5, which I bought. And um, the thing is, with the T5, is I saw some transfers on um, on eBay for Freightliner, support vehicle, for the T5. And I ended up buying the T4 first, uh, not realising it. And then I realised I should have got a T5. I managed to find the T5. Um, this come from Paul. Um, this particular one came from Paul um, at my local model shop. And... Um, it is really beautiful. So I'm going to get some, again, transfers for this. So this is going to be converted into a Freightliner support <clears throat> van, which I'm really looking forward to because I'm sure that will look really, really nice once um, once I get the transfers um, on to the, um, onto the vehicle. I'm now going to take you to the um, layout because now I've got some stuff on the layout to show you. Um, so, and then we've got to talk through that. So stay tuned. Something new that's turned up on the layout, along with my hat and delivery of vehicles, was the, um, this RHTT Sandite set from Hattons. Um, and I got it because I, I missed the boat with the MPVs when they were selling at £60 and I really wanted to um, get this set um, because I thought it looked really beautiful and I thought I could do with that and as you can see just behind it is my class 73 but to my um, disgust to be honest and I was really quite angry about this um, my, unfortunately, my, um, RHTT Sandite set arrived broken. Now, as you can see, um, I've had to, one of the buffers was broken. I've had to super glue that back on. So that needs to be repainted to blend that back in. One of the buffers on this end as well was facing the wrong way around, so facing upside down. Um, at the other end, um, I think you can, yeah, that's one of the other buffers is bent. Um, there was bits in the box that was broken. I mean, fortunately, the main body, like all the handrails and everything like that, wasn't broken, but. 
it was the buffers that were basically the main problem. Um, this first unit that you see, that was perfectly fine. Um, and I'm hoping to run it behind with the 73. And maybe I might get another one to go with it, but that's a, that's a project, ongoing project that is. But this one here had a number of issues with it. Like I said, that buffer was broken. This one was facing the wrong way around. And, and the one on the other end of it was bent. And I've had to re-bend it back in, but I'm probably going to have to re-glue that to make sure that that doesn't fall off. So what bugs me about it and what annoys me about it is the box arrived with the courier from the courier, in this case DPD, and there was nothing wrong with the outer box at all. There was not a single mark on the outer box. This is the inner box that it arrived in. And there's nothing wrong with this box at all. So how did these bits arrive damaged? And, you know, it just really bugs me because it just goes to prove once again that the quality control at Hatton's just isn't there. Um, and I could have sent it back. But, I mean, it's like, what's the point? You know, you send it back and then God knows how long it's going to take before they receive it and then they acknowledge it and then they return. I wouldn't see this until, what, end of next week, maybe the following week. And it's just an annoyance more than anything. Um, and I found out from Paul recently um, that he actually had some of these Hattons RHTTs and I didn't know and I was so disappointed when I found out because I said to him if I'd known you'd had it I wouldn't have bought this from Hattons I would have just bought it from him directly I didn't realize he had Hatton stock and apparently I think he still has some and the thing is you know if I bought it from him I would have known that he would have checked it before I actually parted any money with it and if it, there was anything wrong with it at all, he would not have given it to me. And he certainly wouldn't have given it to me knowing that it was damaged. He, you know, he would have turned around and said to me, it was damaged, and then maybe I can make that decision and say to him, well, maybe if you reduce the price, I can, you know, I'll buy it damaged. But he certainly, he's not that kind of person. And it annoys me that this box arrived and there's not a mark on this box, absolutely nothing wrong with it. And yet there's bits rattling inside it. And it's just really, really frustrating. Um, because surely when these people pick these things off the shelf, you know, when, when it's fine, you don't hear anything. But if you can hear things rattling around in a the box, then you might want to think to yourself, well, let's just have a quick look. But they just throw it into a box or whatever and they just send it out. They're not even paying attention. So I'm really, really disappointed in Rouse. And this is one of the main reasons that I always say that you should support your local model shop. Because quite frankly, I don't particularly trust the online retailers. And there's two. And um, I have to say, this is one of them. Um, you know, I buy things. The only, the only reason why I really buy things from Hattons is because I don't get it. I can't get it from my local model shop. Because literally... 90% of the stuff that I buy, probably even 95% of the stuff that I buy comes from my local model shop. And it's only stuff like that's limited edition that he doesn't do that I will go and have to order it from, whether it be Kernos or whether it be from, from Hattons or Rails. But to be fair, I haven't had any issues with Kernos at all, but I have had issues with, with Hattons. And it's just... It's just really quite poor, to be honest, because it's like I said, it's not the courier's fault because the box didn't arrive crushed. The actual box itself was in pristine condition. So it's just really, really, really rubbish to do with their quality control. And um, they should really learn to get their act together to sort these things out because it's not fair on us to buy these locomotives and buy 
products from them and expect us to sort of spend hours trying to put them right before we can actually use them properly for our layouts. And it's just not on. Anyway, that's kind of my little my little rant over and done with. Um, we're now going to talk about 66s. So I'm going to spin you back around and show you some more 66s. So bye for now. So we're now going to talk about 66s. And I've got a number of 66s to chat to you about because um, quite a few of them have had some additional work. And um, so let me just start off with this one. So this is 66 721. Um, this is the Harry Beck livery tube map one, special edition. Um, apparently, if you want one of these, there's a chap asking £450 for it. Um, which is crazy money on eBay at the moment. I don't know if it's still there. I should imagine it is because I can't imagine anybody wanting to pay £450 for a locomotive. But this one has had finally had its nameplates fitted. And um, so it's had its nameplate fitted on this side, as you can see here, and it's had it fitted on the other side. Um, the other thing is to note that um, because of the nature of the curves on this layout, um, when fitting the air dams, and some of you may have this issue, so this is a bit of a tip, um, and that's the front air dams, and I'll show it to you in a bit more closely on another Batman 66, so I'll talk to you about that shortly. Um, another 66 that's had a little bit of work done is my Hatton 66, and that has also had a nameplate fitted to it. Um, Terry Baker, 66 847. Um, Basically, when I bought this from Hattons, um, it wasn't named. Um, apparently, I think the loco was named in 2018, the, the actual real one. Um, I managed to get the transfers off of Railtech. Um, but I have to say, I've had issues with the nameplates uh, from Railtech. Um, the rest of their transfers is absolutely fine, no problems. Um, but their nameplates is slightly different because they're thicker and they're embossed. And they seem to have trouble sticking to the actual locomotive. Now, the first time I did it um, with the HSTs, um, when I put it into the water, the water maybe wasn't warm enough or something. And it just curled and it just wouldn't lie flat and it wouldn't stick. And eventually I had to end up getting the Pritt stick to, to, to stick them down with, which seems to have done the trick. So with this one, I changed the temperature of the water to see if that was going to do it. And um, and that seemed to work a bit better. It laid flat. It looked like it was sticking. And it stuck for about an hour. And then it started to curl. And again, they fell off. So um, again, I had to use Pritt Stick. And then now I've got Pritt Stick. It's held on with Pritt Stick. And um, so again... You know, I'm a bit kind of cheesed off that, um, again, Railtech haven't put any specific instructions to do with the nameplates on their instructions. Um, it just says, you know, um, add a bit of PVA to the water or something like that. And, um, and that's pretty much it. But it doesn't say that anything specific about the instructions to do with the nameplates. It hasn't really, um, yeah... I'm really not impressed, but I mean, it does look good now it's on. I mean, I'd still get away with it if I was to order some more, but it isn't quite what it says on the tin. So just be a bit aware um, that if you do order nameplates from Railtech, that you might come across some of these issues. Um, so that's that 66. Sitting in front of you is the latest addition to the fleet. And this comes courtesy of um, John Barnes, who kindly purchased um, the wagons for me previously and has now done and bought me this Class 66 for Christmas, which I'm absolutely over the moon with and dumbfounded by the generosity of um, John for doing this for me. Um, and I got this 
picked this up from Paul over at my local model shop in Alton at the Alton Model Centre and again it's credit where credit is due um, not only to John for buying this for me um, but also to Paul and the reason for Paul is because This particular 66 was the last one he had. Um, and when he tested it for me, which is, like I said, this is Paul being Paul. Um, he tests things before he sends things out or he sells things to make sure that everything is okay. So he's not going to just throw it into a box and throw, give it to a courier and let them just sort it out. So before he authorized the release of this 66 there was a there was a slight issue with it um it had a slight noise with it and he promptly phoned me to tell me that there was an issue with it um but he said he'd have to take the body off and see if he can investigate it and as it turned out it was a very uh, minor thing um so he said to me look as soon as i took the body off the noise went away job done he asked me if he want, if I wanted to put the decoder into it. And um, I said to him, yeah, that's fine. Please do that for me. I'd be really grateful. Um, so there was no extra charge for that. Um, and he also set it up beautifully. <laughs> this thing just runs absolutely beautifully. So, and I had to phone him back to thank him and say to him, look, thank you so much um, for this locomotive because it runs an absolute dream. It really does. It accelerates beautifully it decelerates beautifully um, it hasn't had much run time to be honest because I've had other projects on the go and also because um, there's some work that's been done on the layout which means that I haven't actually been able to run any kind of trains uh, for a little while but once again thank you so much to John um, for, for, for his generosity once again um, it's just a beautiful beautiful 66 and I just love it to pieces it's just absolutely gorgeous So the next 66 to talk to you about is my Hornby 66s. I have three of them. Um, this is one of them. One. And this is the um, the pink version. And um, I own three. And the reason why I'm showing you this one is that this is your bog standard 66 from Hornby. Um, and it's got... And basically... I've done some work to the other two just to improve them and um, I just thought I'd show you what I've done and I just wanted to show you the difference because I'm just going to quickly take you off the tripod here and show you that basically this is a bog standard 66 by Hornby so I just wanted to sort of show you exactly what it is. Now the only thing I've done with this, sorry for my crazy camera work, is that I've added a makeshift lighting kit on the on this end, which again is just held on by a white tack that you can just take off. Now I do have another kit on the way for my class 73s and um, the lighting kit and it might be good enough to do for my 66s so essentially this particular 66 is your standard Hornby 66 with nothing done apart from me just sticking a couple of lights on it on the front with a bit of white tack but I'm going to show you the other two so you can see what I've been up to with the other two 66s so this is my Hornby Freightliner 66 and maybe on the face of it it looks like a standard freight owner 66 that you get from Hornby but this has had a lot of work done to it um, basically um, the body and chassis was separated and the body was completely resprayed um, in terms of it wasn't resprayed as in I repainted the freight liner color scheme but basically I resprayed the body in a gloss varnish and that was to take the plastic off the um, 
off the off the off the look of the original 66. So I've gave, given that some varnish, um, some gloss varnish, totally all over. Um, I then what I did also was I then did some work on the roof um, and did some exhaust work on the roof and weathered that. I, um, I then went over the roof with a matte varnish to tone the roof down, but not the sides. So the, that, so the sides have still got um, a kind of shine to the sides a bit, which I'm not sure how easy it is to see, um, but it's definitely made a huge difference um, compared to the... Um, compared to the original um, one and also I've gone and basically repainted the chassis completely um, the chassis had a complete repaint and it's also been weathered and that's just to make it look a little bit less like toy like and make it look a bit more like a model that and a 66 that's actually had some work so I haven't finished with these models yet because I'm looking at doing the lighting because I hate this lighting. It's absolutely awful. I don't like it. Um, so I'm hoping to get, um, I've ordered some bits for it again that I'm waiting on. And if my idea comes right, um, hopefully we'll might actually get some running lights onto these, but it won't be done through um, um, Express models or illuminated models, whoever it was that do the Hornby ones. Um, this would be my own ones that I'll be doing. Um, but if you sort of, I'm just going to sort of take you to have a bit of a closer look. You can see that the undercarriage has had some work and the plastic has just gone, the black plastic's gone. And you, and you can see the shine here on the side of the body where it's been glossed. But the roof hasn't. And it's just had looks like it's had a bit of a working life. So, but the roof has been matted down. There's still a bit of a shine to it, but I've matted it down and I've weathered the exhaust. And it's just made such a huge difference just painting it. just looks like it's had a bit of a working life and like I said hopefully by the time I get rid of those lights on the front it will just look a bit more um, <clears throat> excuse me it'll look a bit more running and used than just like a toy so this is the one I've just done and then this is your standard one and again it just looks so plasticky I, th I mean it's quite a subtle difference, but it is a big, massive difference just painting it. It's just made a huge difference. You look at the way that that black is. That does not look like plastic, but this does. So I haven't done this as your standard Hornby. I haven't done anything to this. And I was thinking of doing a live stream on doing the chassis. And um, I don't know about doing the body because the body is a um, spray job. So... That's going to be hard to show on live stream. But if anyone is interested, please let me know in the comments. And maybe I'll do this one, at least the chassis, live on a stream. And we'll take it from there, really. Um, this particular 66, um, I took, I was looking at images on Google to try and get to understand what they look like. And I've tried to follow the images from Google as best as I can. Um, and so therefore, you know, hopefully I've done it kind of justice. Like I said, the lights need doing, um, but so I've done this one and this is my other Hornby 66 and this is absolutely my favorite. Honestly, I love this 66. I mean, I actually loved the paint job before, um, and I was a bit gutted not to get the, um, Batman version um, when Rails were doing it and I was doing an r and over it for ages and then I decided when I decided to get it it been sold out and I've ended up getting this version um, and I'm really pleased with it because 
since I've done the work on it, it's a totally different locomotive. It really is. Um, this has had a lot of work done to it as well. Um, but it looks so much better, honestly. It's just on the face of it. Hopefully you can see by the face of it that it, it just looks so much nicer. Um, basically, I love delivery. So what I've done is, again, like the Freightliner one, I separated the body, which is quite easy on Hornbys. Um, you just got to make sure that they're lined up when you put the bodies back, that the steps are lined up with the doors. That's the only thing you've got to just look at. The, the body has had a complete gloss respray. Um, and I've given it quite a few coats because um, I come across this video on YouTube of this exact locomotive, 66047, being named. And you've got an absolute view, great view of it, just literally gleaming out of the paint shop. And that was kind of what I was going for with this one. Um, and so basically I've completely resprayed the body in gloss um, and I've given it quite a few coats because I really wanted to bring out the shine in it and give, give it that kind of like, it's just been repainted, it's just been done kind of look. And even when I've seen it working, it always looks so gleaming and shiny as well. So it always looks like in, in, in immaculate condition. Um, Hornby um, provided the etched nameplates with this particular model. So I've attached those on. Um, the chassis has had a complete rework as well. That's been painted in gloss black um, as per the prototype. So the whole chassis has been painted in gloss black. The, um, the air down has been painted in gloss black. The um, buffers were painted in gloss black. Everything was painted in gloss black and just picked out the occasional bits because there are some bits missing on the Hornby as you'd expect, because it's not as detailed as a Batman 66. Um, but you know what? It's just making the best out of it. And I just think it just looks absolutely superb. I'm absolutely loving this. So this is a side view of 66047. And I think you can just see it's just shining through. It's just got this really beautiful, freshly painted look about it. That whole kind of plastic kind of Hornby kind of look has disappeared just by doing a few simple things. Um, and I say it's simple and I appreciate that to some people, maybe it isn't. So let me just see if I can zoom you in and then we'll go through it. Okay. So as you can appreciate, the um, Hornby 66 hasn't got as much detail as all the other 66s. However, you can still make the most of these things. And um, so, like I said, the body was painted in gloss black. And as you can see, it's very shiny. It's very glossy. Um, like I said, it looks like it's just come out of the paint shop. Um, I was looking at some of the Maritime 66s on YouTube to look out for bits and pieces that were picked out. So the latches on the box were picked out. There's some signage that was there. Um, there's also the caps here that were also, there's one silver, one yellow. Um, and that's all pretty much that I could do because some of the other bits that I wanted to add, I couldn't really see enough to be able to add. Um, but you can see how glossy and shiny she absolutely looks. She looks adorable in this new look. It looks so much nicer than the original 66047 um, that I bought <clears throat> just by doing these few simple things and none of this actually took a long time to do as you can see at the front the air dam has had its um, repaint in gloss black and so has the buffers to make sure that they all stand out and it just looks absolutely beautiful and um, if I just bring the other one in They've had two different schemes, really. You know, you can see that one sort of um, had the more weathered look. Let me just see if I can zoom you out a bit. And and the um, 66047 looks like it's just come out of the paint shop. But I was deliberately going for those looks. Um, I was looking at the photographs on both before I attempted to do anything, just to sort of have an idea of what I wanted to do. And now these sort of bulk standard Hornby models 
actually look so much nicer. Um, so like I said, the only thing I really want to do is I'm just waiting on parts is to get to get rid of these lights and do something with the lights because I don't like them on any of them. Um, the lighting on this particular one is wrong in any case um, because um, in, in reality, um, I think it's 051, 66051 has got this type of lighting still on it. But this particular one, 66047, has got the upgraded refurbished lighting system on it, which this isn't demonstrating. Um, but these are, if you've got a simple, basic um, Hornby 66, these are a few things that you can do to make them look really, really nice. Um, and like I said, I've got um, this one still to do. Just zoom out. So this one is one that I've done absolutely nothing with and I deliberately left this one with nothing being done because um, I was thinking of maybe, maybe doing a bit of a live stream with it and sort of just painting it up live just to show you um, show you guys um, the techniques that I've using and all the rest of it. So if you like what you've seen with some of the things that I've been doing in terms of weathering and um, what I've been up to, I'm just going to quickly give you a quick overview of some of the products that I've been using um, for those of you that are interested in um, doing so. Um, now at the beginning of the um, video I showed you um, the BPTTA tanks. Um, if you are interested in repainting your own um, I used a grey Halfords primer um, and followed by, because it does say on this tin, uh, for best results, use grey primer. And this is the green that I've used, and this is the Ford Modena green. Oops, hang on a minute. There you go. Ford Modena green. Um, so that was the green that I used for the TTA tanks for the BP. So anyone who's interested in doing the BP tanks, um, that's the colour that I've used. And it's a very, very good match. Indeed, as you can see, it's pretty much identical. Um, for the frame dirt, I've used a Varel Match frame dirt, um, which comes in this tin as such. And that was to put the dirt onto the j and wagons and what I've done on a number of other wagons that I've used this particular product on my HIAs, my IOAs, and my JNAs have all had frame dirt. Although this does say matte varnish, um, it was basically this tin. And since we've got the matte varnish here, this is what I've used um, for the roof um, of my Freightliner 66. Um, I'm not sure what look I'm going for with um, the pink one. Um, but it might be a case that I might be reusing that, but if I, if I do, I'll let you guys know. But you can just, even if I was to do nothing else with that body, I would spray it with a matte varnish just to tone it down so it doesn't look so plasticky. Um, for the gloss, I've used um, what I could get hold of at the time. I've had this, and this is one of the beauties. Um, I've bought these things for other projects and I've had this knocking around now and I've been able to make use of some more of these tins um, so they're just not sitting there. So I've got this plastic coat clear super gloss varnish. I can't remember what I originally bought these for, um, bought this for, but um, I think I bought it for, this, for the HSTs if I'm not mistaken. So um, I've used this to do the 66047 and um, and it's also, they also recommend that it also if you use Railtech transfers, that the surface that you put it on is a gloss surface, so the transfers slide easier. But this is what I've used for 66047 and also for 66623, the two Hornbees um, that I originally sprayed with the gloss. This was the gloss that I used. And you just keep uh, spraying it from a distance. Don't spray it too closely. If you spray it too closely, too heavy, you might get runs in it. And then that will obviously, and once you get runs in it, you can't clean it, you can't do anything with it. Um, because it will just absolutely ruin it. So, you know, that's why you've got to be a bit careful when using this stuff. Because I have used this stuff in the past and it's gone wrong with me. This is how I've learned um, that I went too heavy with it and then there was drips on it and it looked absolutely awful. Um, and then we come to the paints that I've been using. And 
I've been using um, these this batch of paints. These are all the same paint, um, but different colours. Um, basically, um, I've now been converted fully to Vallejo paints. Um, this was done by Paul, who suggested these paints to me. And ever since he suggested them to me, um, I haven't looked back really. They are absolutely superb paints to work with. Um, they go on really well. They're acrylic paints. Um, so they, there's, there's no smell. There's no harshness about them. They dry really quickly as well. Um, this this is a, just a general black. And this is what I've used for the um, Freightliner 66 chassis. Um, this is the glossy black. So obviously you can tell that I've used that on the Maritime chassis. Um, and that's what I've used. Um, and I've also used this actually a little bit on the for the fuel spillage on on sixty six sixty three just to demonstrate that it's, there's a bit of fuel overspill. So I've used that as well. Um, the red I've used on various occasions. I've used this red for the bus stop sign on the layout, and I've also used it for a little bit on the signage on the sixty six zero four seven. And then we've got the white. And like I said, I'm so converted that as, as I'm running out of colours, um, I'm now changing, if, like say if I bought Ravel or Humbrol, um, when they finish, instead of buying more Humbrol of that colour, I'll switch to Vallejo. Um, I just love using these. These are just so easy to use and they're just absolutely brilliant. Love them to bits. So I'm definitely converted now to these. Um, the HST yellow ends were done with these. And also to pick out certain um, things on the chassis as well. I've used these bits of highly recommend Vallejo paints, really do. And they're not that expensive either. So those are some of the bits that um, have arrived uh, or that I've used for my various projects that I'm working on. Like I said, my 66s haven't been finished because I've still got the lighting to do. Um, on these Hornby 66s, whether or not I'm actually put working lights in them, I don't know. I'm now going to spin you around to take you for a layout update to finish because this has probably been going on for such a long time. Um, so it's been quite in depth in terms of the 66s. But like I said, if any of you are interested, um, please let me know in the comments and maybe within the next few days because I'm looking to get the 66 587, the pink one, done within the next few days. So if it's a case that there's enough people interested, I will do it live and then people can ask as you go along. And if anyone's got any other questions to ask as to, as to some of the other bits and pieces I've been up to, they can also ask. Um, oh yes, one more thing that I should actually point out to you, which I bought, um, not which I bought, but which I use for weathering and stuff like that. Um, so sometimes, you, you kind of sometimes have to think a little bit outside the box when it comes to certain products and certain things um, because I'm always trying to look for good value and trying to sort out, um, trying to do things on a budget. As I've, as I've shown you, I've got 66 system stuff that I've bought. So anyway, that aside, um, you don't necessarily always have to spend a lot of money to make things look good. It's how you put them together. And that's what I was always told. Um, me being transgendered, and I've got no problem with saying that, I've no problem with who I am. Um, we used to have this kind of thing where there was a lot of people that would dress and they think they look good because they've got designer gear from head to toe. And they think because it's designer gear all the way through and it's expensive stuff that they, that they look amazing and they look great. But the reality is you need to know how to have a dress sense and put it together. And it's kind of the same with the railway. You don't necessarily always need to spend a lot of money um, to make things look good. It's just how you go about, it's the application of it. So one of the cases in this instance was um, some time ago, um, Tony Northeastern put up a video about um, the winter video and he used weathering powders from Tamiya. And they were absolutely superb, and I really liked what he did with the loco, and it looked absolutely immaculate. It was absolutely brilliant. I loved it. And he showed the palette from Tamiya you know, of powders, 
And when I had a closer look at this palette and a few other palettes, not just that particular palette, but I thought it was such an extortionate amount of money for just a few colours. And it was like, so there were some pa palettes which are like £20, there are some palettes which are £8, that, that, that depends on what sort of pack you get. But they're all quite expensive. Now, obviously, um, a tip from me being trans and doing my girly bit um, is that obviously I go to Boots and I go and buy makeup and all sorts. And basically, you can just get some makeup powders. So I got this makeup palette from Superdrug. I think it's Superdrug, so I have Superdrug or Boots. I believe it was Superdrug, to be honest. Um, and this is a palette of browns and blacks. Now, obviously, you know, you can scrub some of the glitter stuff, but I've been using, that's what I've been using to weather the 66. Um, so if I just show you, obviously some of the glitter and stuff, you know, you wouldn't be using, um, but some of these other browns and blacks you can use to weather your locos. And this whole palette, I think cost me, it's about five or six pound. So for this whole palette, you're getting a range of browns and you're getting a black and it's just the same, you know, then basically using, um, well, that, that's how I do it anyway. I mean, people might be watching me going, oh my God, she's using makeup on locos. Oh my God. Can't. But essentially it's the same. You're, you're making a locos look better, at least in my view. And from my point of view, if I turned up on the front of the screen with no makeup, I think um, I'd be quite a scary person to be looking at, to be truthful. <laughs> so there is some kind of similarities and method in the madness in the sense that, you know, I use makeup to make myself look more presentable and to try and look myself as good as I can to present myself on camera. And um, it's kind of the same with the locomotives. You're kind of adding makeup to it to try and make it either look more realistic or, or whatever. So you can kind of see the similarities there. And like I said, you don't necessarily have to go to your local model shops to buy these things um, because you just sometimes you can just get these things on the cheap elsewhere. It's like with PVA, you know, you can buy the proper PVA for like, I think seven pound or, or something like that if you go to like the DIY stores. But if you go like to the pound stores, you can still get PVA, which does the trick. And it's a lot cheaper for the same quantity. So sometimes it just pays to shop around, um, I guess is what I'm just kind of um, getting at. <laughs> so let's get on to the final part of the update. And that is the, um, the layout update. That's what it was. That's what I was going to do. I'm going to spin you around now. So for the final part of this update comes the layout update itself. So what have I been doing to the layout in terms of um, upgrading it and doing what I've been doing to it. Now, in truth, um, a lot of the work to the layout has been done underneath, which I will show you shortly, um, because a lot of it has been electrical work, um, tidying up the wires, putting the cable ties and the pads to try and tidy things up. I've also added some switches, and I'm going to go through that in just a moment. Um, I've also had a number of issues um, with platform five, which is the one right at the very back, um, where I've had problems sort of on the corners, on the bends there, where the, where the track level wasn't quite right. So I've had a few derailments down there and also some derailments which started actually, originally started at this end. And by the time it got to the other end, it, the train had derailed. So, I spent a lot of time at the back of the layout trying to work out what the problems were. And when I laid it, it was fine. But obviously, I think as the tracks dried, when I ballasted it, it's probably expanded a little bit and probably distorted it a little bit. Um, so I spent a lot of time trying to sort that out. So that's another reason why I haven't really been running many trains. Uh, but that is now sorted. Um, and then whilst I was doing that at the back of the layout, I was also doing some other bits and pieces to sort out the track work to make sure that that's all hunky-dory. Um, so what, what I've been doing is additionally, I've been adding some further lamp posts. So that one's a new one. Um, we've also got another lamp post over down at the far end. 
which I will kind of take you to, which is this one you can see just here. And then we've got this tool one at the back there, which has also been um, added to the layout. Um, I've also been sorting out some of the lighting on the town scene because I've had some issues with the wire bundle um, at the back. So what I've decided to do is I've tidied it up and basically they just go through the back at the moment but I'm still going to try and hide it but I've no longer got this wire, big wire bundle at the back here and I've used Tony's technique of having two wires just basically going all the way across and then just solder each um, lighting unit to each wire to make them to work so I will be disguising this a bit further but at the moment um, that's how it is um, I've also added the Southwest train signage on this corner um, so what I'm going to do is I'm now going to switch off all the lighting and then try and get this dark as possible so you can see the rest of the lighting effects. So as you can see at the moment, the, to the layout is in complete darkness at the moment. So this is just a good way to demonstrate the lighting system. And I'm going to spin you all the way around and that's the, um, that's the actual train care depot. You can probably see my finger there. So you can see how dark the whole layout is. So we're just going to show you exactly what the brightness is about. So hopefully this is all going to go to plan. So three, two, one. So I've got two transformers. Um, and as you can see on one of the transformers, we're powering up the town scene. And we're also powering up um, the the train care depot side of things. So I've now created the switches so they can all be switched and they're just not um, quick release plugs anymore. So this is something I've been working hard on. Um, so this is number one, I think this is number two, forgive me if it goes black again. And then there's the other one. So now we've got the full range of lighting on the layout. Um, so there's still a couple of spots that I'm still trying to work out what I'm going to do with in terms of lighting. Um, one of it is this corner here. Um, I'd like to add some more lighting on this because it seems a bit dingy on this corner by the bus garage. Um, and there's also another bit probably right down the back there that could do with a bit more. But generally speaking, um, this is the whole lighting 100% on for Behringer. Now, Behringer, what am I talking about, Behringer? Mildenhall and Volmer. And as you can also see, I've added a separate switch for the recovery truck. So there is the recovery truck. So I didn't want this to be going on all the time. So I've added a separate switch for that. So that doesn't have to be on all the time. So that's something else I've been up to. So this concludes the end of the video for today. Um, my apologies if it's been long-winded. Hopefully it's been really interesting for you and you've taken something out of it. Um, I'm really, really enjoying these little projects that I've got going on for 2021. And um, I'd also like to thank John for his beautiful gift on this 66. Um, John, you can rest assured that I'm not actually going to be doing anything with this 66 in terms of weathering. In fact, I haven't done any kind of weathering on any of my locomotives, to be honest. This, this, the um, Hornby ones are the first two that I've dealt with. And that's probably because I guess there's an element of lower risk to them um, because they are um, a bit more on the budget side. And as I gain confidence, I might decide to, to kind of branch out a bit more onto some of my other locomotives. But this particular 66, I just love the, um, the the vibrancy of the colour, the red. And I love the DB Cargo logo on it. And um, I think it's absolutely fantastic. And so thank you so much for that gift. I really, I was absolutely just, just like absolutely dumbfounded, really. It's a beautiful gift and um, one I will cherish on the layout. Um, like I said, I just love the vibrancy and I just love 66s in general, as you probably got, as you guys probably know. Um, so like I said, this is the end of the video. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. And if you've made it all the way through, um, then woohoo, well done <laughs> and a thumbs up to you. 
And um, like I said, if you want to see me um, do the one, um, the pink one, um, 66, um, live, then please put it in the comments, let me know, and I will dredge up some photographs and see what, what I'd like to do with it. Um, I haven't decided whether I'm going to go kind of down the, the, the 60047 route, which is the complete glossy look, brand new out the paint shop look, which I might very well do, or whether I'm going to go sort of like a half-half, like I did with the Freightliner. So I'm not too sure yet. I'm going to be looking at some images and seeing what kind of, see if there's a photo that I kind of like the look of that I, that I can work to. So until the next time, it's bye from Wildenhall and Valmer. Goodbye. And a happy new year to you all.